Hvis du får rista skål. Hvis du får råda skål. Hvis du får fåa skål. Hvis du får frista skål. Hvis du får bidja skål. Hvis du får blåda skål. Hvis du får sända skål. Hvis du får sova skål. All right, everyone. Hail and welcome to tonight's episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse, and if this is your first time, hail, welcome. Thank you so much for watching. I host a weekly video here on the channel, uh, usually covering Norse heathenry-related subjects, things that may strike my interest or fancy at the time, things that I want to cover. Also, there are several uh, sort of, you know, series types things that are going on, one of which is going to be what we're talking about tonight. You can go to the playlist section and check out all the other series related videos if, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Just check that out and see if it's anything that you're interested in. Uh, tonight is going to be episode one of a nine episode series covering the runes. Um, I'm calling this series the nine pieces of eight. Um, a pathway of studying the runes. Guys, this is going to be a sort of in-depth, but not too in-depth, uh, discussion and study of the the rooms okay um so if you like what i do if you've watched any of my videos before and you haven't already please become a subscriber it's right down here uh or right over here somewhere it's that red rectangle button just click it if you're interested if you don't want to miss a video just click the bell notification so that way you're notified every time i upload new content here would really appreciate it also be sure to go down into the description and check out any of the other ways that you can support Midgard Musings by liking the Facebook page, um, purchasing any uh, merchandise through the Teespring store, as well as sending donations to the channel via PayPal. All of that is down in the description. Um, so thank you again so much for watching. I want to go ahead and just kind of, this is going to be a sort of, you know, uh, introductory episode. Uh, the next eight episodes of this series is going to be covering runes specifically. You know, um, we're going to do, because there are uh, three sets of it, you know, so there are it, eight runes in the first set, there are eight runes in the second set, and eight runes in the third set to make up 24 uh, Elder Fudar runes. Um, so we're going to be covering several runes each week over the next eight weeks after tonight's episode to cover the full uh, 24 Elder Food Arc set. Um, but just to kind of give you guys, if you're, if you're new to Heathenry or if you're not exactly sure what we're talking about when it comes to the runes, um, maybe you've heard that term being used before um, amongst heathens, maybe you're, you're interested in, in learning a bit about them. Uh, this series is going to kind of continue on uh, in succession. We're going to do an eight week after tonight, so it's a nine week long total, it's going to be an eight week, or nine week long total, eight weeks after this, um, consecutive uh, series of episodes. So hopefully this helps you kind of get a little bit of insight and understanding of the runes. I definitely encourage you to uh, check out any related content that you see pop up in annotated cards that are going to appear throughout the video because there's a lot of information out here um, on YouTube and online and in books and in your own practices. Um, anything that you know already about the runes, um, feel free to drop it down into the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, so first of all, this being an introductory video, you know, let's go ahead and get our candle and incense lit. Don't want to forget that because that's kind of customary and tradition here on the channel. We like to light a candle for ambiance. And like to light some incense for ambiance as well. Kind of gets us in the mood. All right. Um, so t like I said, today's you know episode is going to be like a, just kind of an introductory thing. Um, something that there we go. Something that just 
a crash course. Here's, here's what this series is going to be about. I'm not going to really go into too much of the history of the runes. We're going to talk a little bit about that right now, just so that we, you, you know, uh, you can kind of understand what we're talking about. Um, the runes are an alphabet or, or, or symbols that represent sounds and letters that are used to speak languages of Germanic and uh, of the Germanic and Scandinavian uh, peoples, right? The Elder Fudark runes um, you'll see quite often times especially nowadays um, it, it seems to be a popular thing to uh, find the you know the, the elder food art rune alphabet and then um, find their corresponding sound or letter uh, representations and use those runes to spell out things that mean something to us in modern time we're talking about whether it be you know names or phrases or quotes um, there's a very popular graphic which you will see um, in elder food art runes that kind of borders around this world tree uh, Yggdrasil graphic um, and then the elder food art runes are in a circle around it and it in runes uh, it's meant to say not all who wander are lost, or not all that wander are lost, something like that. Um, so, the runes that are used, uh, you know, the Elder Food Art runes that are used to, to write in English, in modern English, um, I don't want to discourage people from doing it because I get it, it looks cool, it, it kind of gives a really neat aesthetic to things that you're trying to do, but realistically speaking, you know, um, the Elder Food Art runes were, were used to write in a language that predates even Old Norse, okay? These are runes that were used to write in uh, Proto-Germanic languages, okay? Um, the language of Scandinavia, uh, pre-medieval Scandinavia, we're talking the Old Norse language, the, the language that the Scandinavian people spoke was Old Norse, and that was written in younger Fudark, um, which are even less. There are 24 uh, elder Fudark runes in that alphabet, if you will, and there are, I believe, 18, or 16 or 18 younger Fudark runes. Um, but the younger Fudark runes were what was used to write in Old Norse. The elder Fudark predates that, and that is what is used to speak in Proto-Germanic languages that predate Old Norse. So to use those runes, to use the Elder Food Art to write in modern English doesn't exactly make a whole lot of sense because those phenoms, those, those sounds, the, the, the sounds that those runes make um, can't be legitimately translated into English because, for instance, not all, right? let's say N-O-T and then a separate word A-L-L, -L, not all in modern English, uses all is A and double L, right? It, it, it's not correct, grammatically speaking, or linguistically speaking, to use double runes. So to use the rune that says A, or the A sound, and then to use the rune that says L doubly, you know, to, to use that rune twice is not correct. It's not linguistically correct or, or grammatically correct. So you, you, you wouldn't be using those runes to speak in a language that it was not designed to be spoken in. Um, but again, having said that, if that's what you like to do and if that's what you kind of want to embrace or whatever, just realize that you're... That's all it is. It's, it's, just, it's, it's an aesthetic side of, sort of thing. You're not, you're, not, you're not doing anything grammatically correct. If you really want to be true to form... Um, I think the biggest recommendation is to find what it is that you're saying in, uh, in, in modern Icelandic, because modern Icelandic is the closest form of speakable language that we have nowadays that most closely represents Old Norse. Um, put it into modern Icelandic and then translate those words, those letters, into younger Fudart runes. Or if you have a working knowledge of uh, modern Icelandic and can read and write and understand Old Norse, um, to use the younger Fudark to put 
your phrase or whatever you want into that stretch of letters, words, what have you, okay? Um, but so, again, we're not going to be going into a whole lot of stuff about the history of the runes because there's so much more information out here on the internet that you can find. There's going to, like I said, there's going to be some stuff that you've probably seen in the annotated cards um, already. Uh, Jackson Crawford, uh, Ari Horger, a uh, lot of really well-educated and well-versed uh, people who can give you way more information over time. It, it, it's it's going to take way more than just one video for you to understand the depth of the history of the runes. Um, but one of the things that comes up in modern heathenry is the use of the runes for magic and divination and spiritual work, esoteric type stuff. Okay. Um, one of the sources that we have that we at least know of um, that the runes were used to some extent for magical purposes or, or uh, spiritual purposes, anything beyond just linguistic, anything beyond just writing, reading, that sort of thing, is an Egil's saga, uh, Egil Skolagrimsen. Um, and it's, it's a very interesting saga. I would encourage you to, to get a copy of it and read it yourself. But one of the stanzas, or one of the things that, that Egil says in that saga, and I'll read it to you first in the best way that I possibly can in Old Norse, and then the modern English translation of what he says um, is is uh, Skol ot modur runarista nemer roda belkuni. Okay, and what that generally I believe is is understood to translate to as is you ought not to carve runes unless you do it well. Reason for that is because in Egil saga, um, a, a boy had carved what he thought was a healing spell or something on some whalebone that he ended up either putting in a wrong rune, he did something to mis, you know, misalign, misrepresent the, the intent, and Egil's admonition or, or warning was that you should not do anything with the runes, you should not work with the runes, you should not carve the runes unless you do it well, unless you know what it is that you're doing. Um, so hopefully going forward in this series, um, I will be able to impart some knowledge of what I've learned from my study of the runes because I am a student of the runes. I am a, and I, again, I have no certification. I have no, um, formal training within the runes. I am a self-proclaimed Vitki. Uh, so take that with a whatever grain of whatever you want to take it with. If you have questions about the runes, you want to reach out to me personally or individually, you can definitely do so. But I've worked enough with the runes over the last several years um, and did my part in wanting to learn the runes that I've gotten a really decent understanding of them and I still learn things every day. Um, so please don't take what I'm saying as canon or as, you know, this is the way you should understand or interpret the runes going forward in this series. But just kind of understand that I'm willing and, and able to help you as much as I possibly can as you are pursuing your own path with, uh, with, when it comes to studying the runes. You know, so the purpose of this series, like I said, this being the introductory episode, is to talk about um, the you know, spiritual and esoteric meaning of the runes um, used today in modern contexts. Uh, it's not really to cover the historical parts of it because, again, we have very little, if any, confirmation in historical texts that the runes, or, or, or in terms of how the runes were used in divination. We obviously know that the runes were used in divination um, in, in some things of like Egil Saga where there was, you know, he, he, he had to correct a rune spell that was carved on whalebone. Um, and even him carving runes on the uh, Neathstone, the, the, the Neathing Pole, uh, in that saga. So there's definitely examples of runes being used uh, in the magical context. But in terms of how they're used, you know, we, ha we, we see a lot of examples nowadays of people using runes as, as kind of like a, almost like a tarot uh, spread. You know, different, different people uh, will, will, will use different spreads of runes. Um, we'll get to talking about that in the series going forward. Um, I myself use a either rune draw or casting method. Again, that will all be talked about further along in this series. Um, 
But the important thing that I want to get across in this video is uh, definitely do your research, do your homework, study the runes, get as much material as you can. The one thing that I would definitely say to stay away from for sure, and I think anybody that watches this video, if, if you're a student of the runes and you've, if you've been involved in any sort of Vitki path yourself, is uh, stay away from Ralph Bloom. Um, anything that you see with his name on it, don't even, don't, don't go there. Um, uh, and, I, and I think a lot of people will, will mirror that opinion. Maybe there's some that won't, but that is my opinion. Uh, take that with it as you will. Um, uh, Diane Paxton is, is pretty good when it comes to the, I think it's the Taking Up the Runes. Uh, Kurt Hoogstrot. Um, I'm going to leave some information down in the description of this video for links of how you can uh, get some material from uh, like Diane and Kurt, some of these folks who I feel are leading authorities in rune study and uh, rune workings and things like that, esoteric, spiritual, heathenry. Um, so definitely check out the description for all that type of stuff. And then please follow the series. Tune in this coming Sunday. I know this video is going up middle of the week. But I'm going to be resuming the live discussion um, on Facebook for the next episode where, I, where we're going to be covering the runes themselves, okay? So it's going to be the first three runes of the Elder Fudar. We're going to be covering Fehu, Urus, and Turisas, all right? So tune in this Sunday coming up for the first three runes of the Elder Fudar rune alphabet. Uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, each rune's meaning, how I interpret them, how I see them in readings, castings, this, that, and the other. You can offer your insight on that. And I'm definitely anxious to hear what you think and how you work the runes in your own practices, if that's something that you want to talk about. So please, down in the comment section, leave your thoughts, leave your comments. If you like these videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't, give them a thumbs down, give me some constructive feedback. I'm always anxious to hear what people have to say and offer me in terms of what I do here on this channel. It's much appreciated. So everybody that's watching on Facebook, please stick around because you know what's coming up after this. If you guys watching here on YouTube are interested about what I just said and you want to be a part of the Facebook community, just head down to the description because the links for the Facebook page are down there. You can click on it, like the page, set your set, uh, notifications so that way you know when I'm going live. You want to be able to see what's going on down here with the Facebook followers, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, there's going to be some more information coming forward about future YouTube live streams. I know I talked to you guys about a week and a half ago about uh, some stuff that had been going on here on the channel with myself and some you know, issues that I had with somebody calling the cops on me. I will be releasing a video that's going to explain the the kind of the, the, the approach that I would, I'm hoping to take. Um, that should be coming out within the next week or so, so please bear with me as I get all that stuff together. This is not something I want to rush into, um, but it's definitely going to be something that's coming forward. So again, everybody that's watching on Facebook, please stick around. I'm going to be with you shortly. And everybody that's watching here on YouTube, thank you so much for your support. Appreciate you supporting Midgard Musings. Be sure to check out everything in the description on ways that you can support this channel. And I will see you all again in next week's video. Check out all the end screen information that you see pop up. Subscribe, like, comment, all that fun stuff. Share it around. Tell your heathen friends. Hail! And I'll see you all in next week's video.